I remember being absolutely terrified the night before. New Orleans was one of those disaster scenarios just waiting to happen. We had experienced one tiny sliver of this far more vast story. We had no idea what we were getting into. August 29th, 2005, a date firmly stamped into the history books as the day Hurricane Katrina slammed into the Gulf Coast, forever altering the landscape of New Orleans and the lives of millions. 20 years on and many still feel the echoes of this storm, the failures, the influences, and the stories it left behind. Well, Katrina started forming in the about third week of August. We had a uh, tropical depression out in the Atlantic, and it combined with another tropical wave, and then became a tropical depression to the southeast of Nassau. When Katrina started, no one predicted it was going to be this historic storm. You never want to attribute any type of human qualities to storms, but some storms do seem to have a resilience about them. I think Katrina surprised some people when it crossed Florida and still came out the other side quite strong. It didn't lose a lot of steam. That says to us as meteorologists, this storm's got a lot going for it. During Hurricane Katrina, I was actually working in Montreal for Environment Canada. Um, however, I am born and raised in New Orleans and all of my family during Katrina was in New Orleans. Three days before the storm struck on August 29th, 2005, I was telling them, this looks bad, you need to leave. But being typical New Orleanians, having lived through numerous other hurricanes in the past, my parents had no intention to evacuate. A group of us storm chasers positioned ourselves in Gulfport, a little over an hour to the east of New Orleans, and watched as Katrina made landfall along the border of Mississippi and Louisiana. We arrived in Gulfport, Mississippi in the late afternoon of the 28th. Yeah. So we had pretty much no sleep for several days at this point, going into I, what is to become the most dangerous spot on planet Earth. Yeah. That's Katrina there. She's coming. Katrina was a Category 5 storm at this point. It had yeah. entered the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. And it started to take that turn to the north and it intensified. It hit the loop current, which is yeah. this, this area in the Gulf of Mexico that has very warm water. And that warm water is fuel for this storm. It was basically like providing it with rocket fuel. It got turbocharged. Yeah. yeah. And it just exploded in size. It was about half the size of the Gulf of Mexico, if not more. It was yeah. humongous and strengthened to category five. And it was coming straight for us. And then we got that warning that was put out by the National Weather Service in New Orleans. Devastating damage expected. Hurricane Katrina, a most powerful hurricane with unprecedented strength, rivaling the intensity of Hurricane Camille of 1969. Most of the area will be uninhabitable for weeks, perhaps longer. Power outages will last for weeks, as most power poles will be blown and transformers destroyed. Water shortages will make human suffering incredible by modern standards. Unbelievable. Well, that's when it got real. Yeah, that's when it got real. This is a disaster scenario. And it was the most probably emotional and catastrophic sounding discussion anyone had ever seen. And it got a lot of press and thankfully so. This discussion said basically, if you do not take action, like you will die. It was very to the point and it got people to take action. I remember being absolutely terrified the night before. We had no idea what we were getting into, but once the storm started to ramp up, and I'm actually in it, I can react to what's happening. Yeah. And I'm in living in that moment. I'm not thinking about what's gonna happen tomorrow. Just after 6 a.m., Katrina made landfall along the Gulf Coast. The eye passed just east of New Orleans, but here in Gulfport, we were hit head on. It was like this continuous, someone cranking up the volume, basically, and every raindrop felt like a needle and every little pebble felt like a bullet hitting you. And yeah. I remember the winds gusting at some 200 kilometers an hour. And I remember thinking, this is kind of like driving at double highway speed 
with your face out the window in the rain. And that's sort of the best description I can give to people of what it felt like being in there. Yeah. One thing that really sticks out to me was the sound of the hurricane. It was like a symphony of, of destruction, if you will. You had the low rumble of the building shaking. Mm -hmm. And then you have like the mid-range screaming of the wind through the trees. And then you've got this percussion of breaking glass and smashing objects all coming together in this chaotic cacophony. When I woke up in the morning, when it had just skirted by Southeast Louisiana, the prevailing narrative at that time, believe it or not, was New Orleans has dodged the bullet because the winds weren't as bad. So there was a period of time, maybe six to 12 hours, where I came into work that Monday thinking, wow, the worst case scenario did not happen. But here's the thing, the damage had been done. Mayday, 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 Coast Guard, Coast Guard. Anybody picking this up? This was sort of our worst nightmare for New Orleans coming true because we knew there was going to be a very large surge. You look at all the surge projections for Category 5, it's going to overtop the levees or force its way through the levees, and there's going to be a great deal of trouble. The levees had actually breached right when the storm was coming in, particularly the 17th Street Canal. The flood wall there had broken. My mom and dad lived within blocks of one of the main levees that breached. Fortunately, my family, they were able to finally leave at the last minute. But there were, I believe, more than 100,000 people that uh, were not able, did not have the means to evacuate, and they were stuck in the city. It's always difficult to evacuate a large city, but you have to realize that 80% or more of the city did flood. The city is literally shaped like a bowl. So we're almost surrounded by water and the city itself is below sea level. And once that water gets in, it can't get out. We sort of decided that we should probably get out of here sooner rather than later. Of course, at this point, all the cell networks are down. So we have like no communication with the outside world yeah and we didn't know how bad it was we had zero idea how widespread the damage was yeah. what had happened in new orleans yeah and we just cleared a path and and basically started driving north i remember being at the weather network giving all the tapes to one of the guys started ingesting it and then we started to see footage of new orleans of the entire city underwater. And I went, what is this? I think at that point realized that we had literally experienced one tiny sliver of this far more vast story than, than, than we had anticipated. Katrina was truly the disaster that New Orleanians always feared, but it was even more so the disaster that meteorologists knew was a possibility. Not one territory, not one governor, not one soldier or airman failed to answer the call. The old adage, you know, send it now, send it all, became the, the mantra. All of our efforts right now are channeled toward helping the people of this beleaguered Gulf Coast. In the days after Katrina made landfall, New Orleans was a city on its knees. Entire neighborhoods sat under water. Tens of thousands awaited rescue on rooftops and attics, and inside the Superdome, an estimated 30,000 people sought shelter and hoped more help would come. Rescue teams poured in from across the country. The Coast Guard, National Guard, police, firefighters, and hundreds more worked nonstop to rescue more than 30,000 people from floodwaters and collapsing homes. But for far too many, help came too late. In New Orleans alone, nearly 1,400 lives were lost and more than 800,000 residents were displaced. It wasn't until October 2nd, 43 days after landfall, that the last of the floodwaters were pumped out. In the end, Katrina caused over $125 billion in damages, the equivalent to over $200 billion today, and has left many with scars, both seen and unseen. Post-Katrina, there is some PTSD. People oftentimes, including my parents, have a hard time talking about Hurricane Katrina. Here we are 20 years later. I thought we were beyond losing a thousand people to a storm in North America. It's just inconceivable given 
the resources that we have, given the warning that's possible. Hurricanes aren't tornadoes. They don't just pop up within minutes. You see them coming and still so many people died. I think that was, that was shocking. Hopefully a once in a lifetime thing. My understanding is that approximately 450,000 people did not come back to the city after the storm, ever. And people kind of fail to realize that uh, people are the ones who are uh, chefs and bartenders and policemen and firemen. And all of a sudden, New Orleans shrunk to a very small town and a lot of businesses who survived the storm did not survive the lack of population in the months and couple of years after the storm. About nine months after Katrina, I went back and actually went to New Orleans. I saw things that I couldn't even digest with my brain. Around the entire city, there was a brown stripe and that was the high water mark. And just one neighborhood after another, after another, after another that had just been waterlogged for so long, just completely destroyed. Every single destroyed home has a story behind it. Thousands of stories that, that I didn't know what happened to these people. And it was just block after block after block of that. Most of us in New Orleans felt like in the first two years after the storm, we're not sure if the city's gonna make it back. In the 20 years that have passed since this devastating event, much of the city has been rebuilt, though some neighborhoods never returned. Major redevelopment efforts have led to growth in the city's population. However, many criticize the influences of gentrification and the displacement of longtime residents. Part of being a good meteorologist is having an imagination. So if you've seen a lot over your career and you go, that storm went this direction. What if it did this? Is that possible? Yes, it is. You can't say when it's gonna happen, but Katrina, I think, made me and a lot of meteorologists realize these kind of low probability, high impact scenarios, they do come to fruition. I think what shocked me and most people even more is what happened to the city in the weeks after the storm. The rescue response was extremely slow and the repair response was extremely slow. With that being said, I will tell you, here we are 20 years later, maybe we're back. The city is very much back. The city is lively. We're back up to over a million people in the city population. Granted, a lot of those people who came to the city are people who are not originally from here anymore. The city will always be vulnerable just because we are surrounded by water. However, the infrastructure with water mitigation has greatly improved in the last 20 years. Levees are now stronger, reinforced. The water evacuation system, uh, underground canals and whatnot have been improved and enlarged. Things have changed forever, but we welcome everybody here because it's a great and fun and unique city on the planet.